You are welcome to a great moment in destiny. God is about to speak directly to you. And the message coming right up is crafted by heaven, not just to challenge you, but to align your destiny. As you embrace divine instruction, expect that God's word is bringing about revival, healing, restoration, and transformation to your entire life. With faith in your heart and great expectation, join me and receive God's word through his choice vessel, Good Heart Obi Ekweme. On this beautiful day across the nations, Piculatus, once has the Lord spoken, twice have we heard that power belongs unto him. Go ahead and celebrate it for open heavens. Ecopotani, Sekipregatele, Ecrobalanda. Express your expectation that in the next few moments the word of the Lord is coming your way like a hammer to crush every mountain, like a river, to flush out everything that God has not planted in your life. Zizi Gebetu Kupatu Kusisi Kepregalite. Father, we give you praise. We honor honor you we celebrate you thank you for the gift of life and the honor to gather across the nations as a global family Lord, I beseech you again to take a coal of fire from the altar of heaven and on the lips and the tongues of clay of the seven son of yours that today will come to your people across the nation with a thus said the Lord. Move every man, every woman, every boy, every girl from where they are to where you reserve for us in the place called destiny. We vow us always to give you alone the praise, the glory, the honor. In Jesus' wondrous name, we have prayed. Somebody shout a big, big, big amen. Well, it is my tremendous joy and honor to come your way this beautiful Sunday morning, wherever you are on the face of the earth. You know, uh, uh, the online service has brought tremendous change to how we do church. But amazingly enough, the same grace, the same power that was with us as we gathered in a the physical congregation has been filtering and just uh, tra uh, uh, traveling through the length and the breadth of the airwaves uh, beyond borders, bringing about healing, deliverance, change, and shift in the lives of God's people. I want to welcome those who are joining us for the very first time. The Lord bless you. This is Rogic Online Church, and I'm sure God is set to do something phenomenal in your life today. Shout a big, big, big amen. Glory to God. Well, if you have your Bible this Sunday morning, be kind to turn together with me too. James chapter number one, James chapter number one, James one, I will be reading from the New Living Translation, that's my choice, you can use any version, that's fine, wherever you are in the comfort of your home, James chapter number one, verses one to four, James one, one to four, NLT, New Living Translation, I read. This letter is from James, a slave of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ. I am writing to the 12 tribes, the Jewish believers scattered abroad. Greetings, dear brothers and sisters, when troubles of any kind come your way, consider it an opportunity for great joy. Woo. For you know that when your faith is tested, huh, your endurance has a chance to grow. So let it grow. For when your endurance is fully developed, you will be perfect and complete, needing nothing. Wow. So let it grow. For when your endurance is fully developed, you will be perfect and complete, needing nothing. Glory to God. The King James Version says, verse 2 and 3 says, My brethren, count it all joy. Hello, that's a word for somebody this hour. Count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptations. Knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh patience. It's a very unusual statement from this man of God, Apostle James, saying we are to count it all joy when I'm in trouble, when I'm going through a test, when I'm going through a difficult, going through a tempest, going through COVID-19. I'm to count it all joy 
But the reason why I can count it all joy is because I know something others don't know. I know that what I'm going through is going to work for my good. I know that the tests are going to turn for me for my testimony. I know that the trials I may be going through will turn for me my triumph. I know something that the obstacles I see before me will only serve for me as a stepping stone for me to climb higher to my next level of glory. I know something that people don't know. So while they may be pulling out their head in chaos, in confusion, and in all kinds of uh, whatever it is, I know something about the circumstance that this is not the last picture or the last frame of the movie. The end is not yet there. For an assignment this morning, count it all joy. Hallelujah. Well, wherever you are in your homes, reach out to your family members, husband, wife, children, say, count it all joy. Count it all joy. Praise God. Father, thank you for the reading of your word. Now bless the teaching and the preaching of the self-same word. We vow to give you the praise and the glory. In Jesus' wondrous name we pray. Amen. Tell you, beloved, as we entered into the month of May 2020, the Lord began to speak to us in very clear terms that the key and the principles you have us employ in this season in particular to engage the many blessings he has in store for us is the key and the principle of activating the joy of the Lord. Very clearly we are in that is where God has so graciously pointed us and directed us to this particular force of the Spirit called the force of joy in order for us to secure victory in the many battles of life. You see, it's interesting to understand that people can go through adversity and the adversity will break them, but some can go through adversity and the adversity will make them. Let me say it again. It is possible to go through adversity and end up being broken by it, but it's also possible to go through it and end up being made by it. Bakuloskasa. I believe that God is saying to us in this season that no matter what it is the enemy may throw at us, that he's going to turn it around for our good. So he gave us a word that is turned our adversities to advantages. Uh -huh. I want these words to sip into your spirit, to begin to renew your mind, reshape your thinking, so that when you encounter the next bump, the next mountain, the next valley, the next obstacle, see it with a different perspective. Say, this one is going to turn for my advantage. Glory to God. Glory to God. It has been oftentimes said that God reveals to redeem. So in sharing with us uh, that you may go through trouble, go through difficulty, he is also by extension telling us that, that it's not going to end in adversity, it's going to end in advantage. Beloved, rather than panic, fret, complain, mama, in the face of the test that you are facing and the world at large is facing right now, I want to challenge you to take a different look and perspective at what it is you may be experiencing and see perhaps the adversity is advantage dressed in clothes of adversity. There's something behind that. Glory to God. Bible declares in James 1 2 that my brethren counted all joy when you fall into diverse. Hey, Kalabalako. You know what the word means, diverse? That means in, in, in multiple levels, colors, shapes, and sizes. That means no matter what you are going through is part of what the Bible describes as diverse. There is nothing you are going through that is not inclusive in this word diverse. There is no unique trouble. There is no peculiar trouble. What you are coming out of, somebody is going into. What you are going into, somebody is coming out of. There's, there's nothing that you and I are facing that is not called common. But oftentimes, we allow our circumstances to make us think that they are uncommon. If you learn to commonize your test, your test will quickly turn to testimonies. If you learn to commonize your trials, your trials will quickly turn to you as triumph. Commonize it. It's common. It's common. Beloved, there is indeed a divine shift that is going on in our world today. With the several changes as a result of the uh, COVID-19, what used to be abnormal is becoming today's normal. Such changes that may have been considered not to be usual is becoming today's usual. Everything is changing. 
The season has brought tremendous pressure tremendous challenges, tremendous difficulties, and people have responded or reacted to these things in different ways. I want to challenge you, beloved, to shift your thinking, because it may surprise you that in the midst of the economic downturn, down, downturn of nations and economies and companies and corporates and individuals, in the midst of all of this, there are people who are arising and they are prospering. In other words, in the midst of what has been termed to be a breakdown, People are breaking through. I want to challenge you this beautiful day, beloved. Take a different look at what you're going through because that adversity is clothed, or adversity is advantage that is clothed in adversity. There is much more beyond the adversity than what you see. As covenant children of a covenant keeping God, we need to keep our hearts open to the scriptural reality that the case of the child of covenant is different. Can you decree and declare where you are in the comfort of your home, your office? My case is different. Say it like a thunder. Say it like a preacher. My case is different. Hallelujah. The Sabbath said, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Your rod, your staff, your word, your spirit, they comfort me. Why? Your case is different. If God be for you, who can be against you? Your case is different. We must change our perspective. Look at what the Bible declares in Job 5.22 to be interested and encouraged at the same time. Job 5.22 At destruction and famine. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. Look at that. Thou shalt laugh. What? At what? At gladness? At harvest? At breakthrough? No, sir. No, man. At destruction and famine thou shalt... Why will you laugh? Because you know there's something behind what you're seeing. Adversity is turning for advantage. Thou shalt laugh, neither shall thou be afraid of the beasts of the earth. Glory to God. Glory to God. Beloved, quite interestingly enough, the season we are in the world presents one for opportunities for great positive and advantage shift in our lives. As a matter of fact, there's a lot of great wealth transfer in the day and age we live in now. A shift of wealth from one place to the other in this season. In this season. Now, I want you to believe God for your many COVID 19 supernatural testimonies. Did you hear me? Believe God for your many COVID 19 supernatural testimonies. That means you, you will see at the end of this, 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 this tunnel uh, that when men were breaking down, God did certain things in your life that were, they were remarkable, things that were unforgettable in this season catalog of testimony of what God did. Your spiritual life, to the quantum leap, even your finances, even your health, even your marital. I mean, believe God for your, your multiple COVID-19 testimonies. You and I are not coming out of this season the same way we entered it. No, no. Coming out bigger, better, stronger, more anointed. Hallelujah to Jesus. Glory to God. Beloved, we must keep our eyes and our ears and our heart opened for such possibilities and opportunities. As believers and people of faith, we must constantly remind ourselves that no matter what may change in our world, listen carefully, we serve a God that never, never changes. Malachi 3, 6, I am the Lord God, I change not. He's the constant, constant in the equation of life. He's consistently consistent, he's constantly constant. Hebrews 13, 8. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. Because our God is, is, is unchanging, unswerving, unwavering, we can depend on Him. He is, he is, he is, who, he is what brings stability in a very instable world. He's what brings a, a, a root and, a, and stability in a very volatile, shifting world. Because we have our anchor, our hope on him, we can stand through the shiftings and the change of time. Hopefully, whether he is the foundation of the rock upon which we're built upon. Matthew 7, 24 says that he that hears the word of the Lord and obeys the word shall be like a house built on a rock. Could he surrender? Built on a rock. Built on a rock. When the storms and the billows and the tempest shall come. Guess what? That house ain't going down. Hmm? I, I pray by the help of God that your life, your marriage, 
your ministry, your business, your career has been built on the word, built on the word, on instructions, on obedience. Because <laughs> the storm is here and more storms are coming. But for those of us who are planted on Christ, rooted, grounded, there's no storm about to move you out of your place. So what am I saying? God is the constant, constant in the equation of life. Aren't you glad that when things are shifting economically, financially, maritally around you, we have a hope. Our anchor is in Christ, the rock of our salvation. Glory to God. The stability in the midst of an unstable world. We're challenged by God to trust that God. Proverbs 3 verse 5 and 6. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart, not some of it, all thine heart, and lean not to your own understanding, act not to the Lord, not of your ways, and he will direct your path. Where to trust him, when we can trace him, we can feel him, where to trust him. He's trustable, <laughs> he's dependable. Mm -hmm. His promise to you and I, they are yes and amen, not yes and maybe. He's the rock we can depend upon him. Glory to God, beloved. It is God's intention, I believe, in this day and age to put a difference in your life as a covenant child. <laughs> that means there are certain things in your life you won't experience because there is a mark upon your life called touch not. Zigalon Tikrata. In Exodus 12, as the Lord prepared to release his children from the land of bondage, he, he, he brought them up into a, 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 a shelter and a covenant and protection where which where which he, he, he declared to them uh, uh, to put the blood, blood mark upon the doorposts and the lintel and on, over their houses. And when the angel of death passed through, he said, uh, uh, when I see the blood, woo, when I see the blood, I will pass over. What happened? When the angel of death came over the land, oh boy, their homes and their lives were preserved. Why? There was a blood mark upon their lives. In like manner also, there is a blood mark over your life. Beyond the blood of goats and bulls, beyond the blood of rams, the blood of Jesus is speaking for you and speaking for me. Passover, victory, joy, peace. Can you declare again? My case is different. Hallelujah. Beloved, as covenant children, we're to declare a lifting up when men declare a casting down. Job 22, 28, such an exciting scripture. Job 22, 28, 29. Thou shalt also decree a thing. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. Who shall decree? God, me, no. You and I, we shall decree a thing and it shall be established unto thee. Okay. So the place of declaration and speaking is you and I and the place of confirmation and establishment is for God. What you don't speak and declare in faith and by faith, you give God no room to confirm his word in your mouth, in your heart. Isaiah 44, 26. So the Lord confirms the word of his servant and performs the counsel of his messenger. So there must be something you are saying that God can walk with and perform in your life. I'm going over, not going under. I'm the well, not the sick. I'm the whole, not the disease. And the blessed, not the cursed. What are you saying? Say something. Psalm 107, verse 2 and 3 says, Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Say something. The redeemed say, they speak. Say, 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 say Thou shalt also decree a thing. So quiet believers uh, have quiet destinies. You must learn to speak consistently and constantly. What do you speak? The word of the Lord. Thou shalt also decree a thing, and it shall be established unto thee, and the light shall shine upon thy ways. When men are cast down, then thou shalt say, there is a lifting up, and he shall save the humble person. Can you declare, there is a lifting up. Glory to God, glory to God, glory to God. What do you say? Don't say what you see, say what the word declares. Joel 3.10 says, beat your plowshares into swords, and you're putting hooks into spears. Let the weak say, I am strong. Let the weak say, I am strong. There's something to be saying with your mouth. What is that? The word of the Lord. Let the weak say, I am strong. Oh, glory to God. Beloved, 
It is the ever abiding presence. Kila balo kutia takasia. It is the ever abiding presence of God in our life that makes the difference. I call it the God factor. When God is with a man, it's going to be a game changer. I, I want you to remind yourself in this season that in a of what is going on around you. God is with me. Katos kata. Romans 8, 31. If God be with me, with you, who shall be against you, shall be against me. There must be a, an assurance and reassurance that the God of heaven is with you. Katos kia. God is with me. Can you declare like a father, God is with me. Setebalam to He's with me. He's with me. So his presence in the midst of a people, in the life of a man, makes the world of a difference. He's what? His presence makes the difference. Jesus, in the boat of the disciples, guaranteed that their boat was not able to sink. Your boat is unsinkable as long as Jesus is in your boat. <laughs> ah, yeah, 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 yeah. I, I want to declare over somebody. I, I don't know what you're going through right now, but I, I sense to speak into your life that, that this is not your end. It, it's Turning for you a testimony. Let me say it again. It is turning for you. As a matter of, in a matter of days, you see that second just turn on its own accord. Turning for your testimony. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Psalm 46 verse, verse 1 says, God is our refuge and our strength. A very present help in trouble. Listen, if you are in trouble and God is with you, are you still in trouble? No. How can God be with you in trouble? You're still in trouble. No. No. The fact that He's with you guarantees trouble is turn around for your own good. Praise God. So God is our refuge and our strength, a very, very present help in trouble. Verse 2 says, Therefore will not we fear, though the earth be removed, and though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea, we will not fear. We will not fear. We refuse to fear. We, are, we refuse to allow the spirit of fear come upon the body of Christ. No, sir. The Lord has not given you the spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. Fear is not allowed to rest upon the body of Christ. In this season, no. We're walking through the valley of shadow death, but we fear no evil because why? God is with us. His, his presence makes the difference. <laughs> Can you declare once again, God is with me. Hallelujah. Praise God. Beloved, the Christian walk and the Christian life is filled with unavoidable battles. But before you get concerned, I want to assure you, under God, under heaven, as many as there are battles, there are also victories for the saints. Hmm. John 16.33 says, These things have I spoken unto you, that in me you might have peace. So by the words of Jesus, you and I will have peace. In the world, you shall have tribulation, if you like, tests, trials, difficulties. But be of good cheer, that's rejoice. You see, it, 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 there's something in scripture that connects rejoicing with trouble and tribulation and persecution. What is it? It, it is joy and rejoicing that brings one out at those difficult moments. So when you see tribulation, you, you see persecution, you see difficulty, the heavens recommend something, joy. But, but that's not normal, it's not natural. I mean, when I'm going through trouble, how do I rejoice? But the key is, rejoicing is what turns it around. Huh. It says, count it all what? Joy. Want to have a breakthrough? No. A new car? No. New house? No. When you find yourself in diverse temptations and tribulations, you count it all joy. Why? You know something. Praise God. I know something. I know something. I know you're coming up big and stronger. I know something. So see here, in the world you shall have tribulation, but be of good cheer, I have overcome the world. Hallelujah. Beloved, joy is one of the most important forces of the spirit. You will need to go along with you as you face life's numerous battles. Let me say it again. It needs to this repetition joy is one of the most important forces spiritual forces you need to accompany you along life journey 
especially as you engage, listen carefully, in the troubles and the tests and the difficulties, the obstacles, the mountains that life normally will present to people. Because joy is an attacker of tribulations and tests and trials. It is what turns it around when it's applied. Hey, a calamorosa. Hey, look, look, look at Acts 16, 25. Very classic example. Look at, look at the, the, these two, two, two gentlemen, uh, uh, Paul and Silas, languishing in the Philippian jail. I mean, eh, under very, very cruel circumstances, perhaps with the, with the feces and their dung in the same prison yard. And, you know, uh, they had every reason to complain. Like, wh wh why did they get there? They were proclaiming the gospel. So they were in jail for preaching the gospel uh, and they should rejoice. But guess what? These two men looked beyond their circumstances and they began to pray and to praise. The Bible says, and the prisoners heard them. I thought they were prisoners too. No. When you begin to praise and pray in your prison, you cease to be a prisoner. <laughs> it's only a matter of time. Yeah. So praying and praising separates you from your environment. Uh, yeah, yeah. I don't know what are the circumstances around you right now. I don't know what the doctor said to you, what the lawyer is saying, what the banker is saying, what the economy of the land is saying. But, but can you look up beyond where you are, beyond the hills from whence comes your help, and praise God? Why? Because you know that this too will come to pass. Knowing this, that our test works patience and patience works uh, 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 perfection. Glory to God. Joy is one of the most important forces you're going to learn to move along life's journey. Why? A joyful Christian lifestyle is a great key to winning and triumphing over the various battles of life. You know, when, when we got born again, and I'm sure that's the case for you also, uh, little did we know that, that being born again was not an exemption from the trials and the tests of life. Uh, uh, many times we felt that when you walk up the altar and said, thank you, Jesus, I love you, come into my heart, be my Lord and Savior, it was an automatic cure-all for all that you go through, or rather, automatic exemption to life's test and tragedies and trap, and whatever it is. But, 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 but as you grow and mature in the Lord, you realize, wait a minute, uh, uh, this walk of faith is not for the faint-hearted, oh boy, not for the lethargic, not for the lazy, not for those who, who are not going to uh, 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 be, 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 be determined to endure through difficulties and challenges and trials, uh, walking by faith and walking their instrument of faith. Not those who are going to sit by and say, oh, whatever will happen, will happen. No, life is no playground. Life is a warfare. No warfare is a warfare. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. And there's a principle in scripture I want to highlight before we go into some things about joy. We look at why we should be joyful. Why should I rejoice, man of God? Why should I rejoice? I want to share this principle with you. You want to write that down? The principle is such that sufferings precedes the glory of God. Sufferings precedes the glory of God. That may not sound too exciting to you, but that's a reality when you study scriptures. Let's look at Romans 8, 17 and 18. It's a reference point to that principle I gave you now. Oh boy. You are coming out bigger and better and stronger. Amen. Amen. This too shall come to pass. It's a word of encouragement for somebody. Romans 8, 17. It's wow. I feel him all over me. And if children, then he is. Right? He is of God and joined hears with Christ. All right, listen carefully. If so be that we suffer with him, suffer with him, right, that we may also be glorified together. Listen carefully. For I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. Is that your Bible? With what? With the glory which shall be revealed, not just to us, revealed in us. My fellow to keep together. So the dimensions of suffering, and don't, don't quickly run your mind to, to what is not, right? But the dimensions of suffering or need for endurance as you walk with the Lord, right? that will ultimately walk about glory for you. So Jesus said, if you identify with my sufferings, my reproach, 
the things that make people reproach you because you're a child of God, if you identify with them, then also in turn, you will also be glorified with me. So the principle is thus, the cross precedes the crown. Principle is thus, the thorns precedes the crown or the throne. Hebrews 12, 2. Looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, who for the joy, you see that now? The joy is where the joy set before him, angel the cross. You see that now? So the cross preceded the joy. That's a principle. Praise the Lord, somebody. Just a principle. Hallelujah. 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 Beloved, for the saint who will rise up to fight, that saint will win. Second Corinthians 2.14 Now thanks be unto God who always causes us to triumph in Christ. There is triumphing for you always. Always includes now. Always includes your present challenge, your present battle, whatever it is. There is triumph. There. Now thanks be unto God who always, without exception, causes us to triumph in Christ Jesus. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Beloved, we, 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 we have identified in the scriptures only one enemy of the saint, one adversary. His name is Satan. He's Satan. First Peter 5, 8 to 9. First Peter 5, 8 to 9. Be sober. Be vigilant. Because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion walketh about Seeking whom he may devour. May devour. Not every sin is devourable. May devour. Whom he may devour. Whom resist steadfast in the faith. <laughs> See this again. Knowing that we're knowing again that the same afflictions are accomplished in your brethren that are in the world. <laughs> See, we need to know something. That whenever you're going through anything, this will bless you. Listen. Whatever you're going through, see, don't let the enemy make it become uncommon. See, knowing that the same afflictions, the same challenge is being faced by brethren that are in the war. You know, what that does, it gives you renewed encouragement to rise up to fight, to contend for what belongs to you. Praise God. To rise up, to establish the victory God gave you in redemption. It's important to understand that Jesus came, he was manifested to destroy the works of the devil, right? The devil, his works are destroyed, but the victory needs to be established over our lives as individuals. We have the authority to establish that victory. Praise God. I put it this way, Satan may have been defeated, but it's not yet destroyed. So he's defeated by Jesus Christ. He was manifest for his destruction. It's for you and I in the various areas of our lives to establish the victory in our health, in our marriages, in our finances. We establish it as it is in heaven, so it is over our lives. Praise God. The battle is a fixed fight. It is a fixed fight. It is a fixed fight. First Timothy 6 12 talks about the fight of faith. We're to fight the good fight of faith. It's called good because it's fixed. You know why? The end has been determined from the beginning. If only you rise up to fight, you win. You're determined to be the conqueror. More than a conqueror, by the way. You're, you're, you're called the victor, not the victim. Mm -hmm. More than a conqueror. It takes faith to resist the devil. So, that, so who resists steadfast? Where? In the faith. It takes what? Faith to resist. Faith to resist. But you see, it also takes strength spiritual strength to put up an adequate resistance. Do you hear me now? It takes faith to resist. It also takes what? Spiritual strength. So one of the things in this day and age we need is to constantly cry out for strength. We will be strengthened in the inner man with might by the Spirit of the living God. Strength. One of the forces or one of the keys to strength is joy. We're landing there now. Nehemiah 8.10 it takes joy to be strong spiritually. Nehemiah 8.10 Thank you, Jesus. Then he said unto them, Go your way, eat the fat, and drink 
this sweet and send portions unto them for whom nothing is prepared for this day is holy unto our Lord neither be ye sorry hey hey for the joy of the Lord is your strength whoa hallelujah the joy of the Lord is your strength the joy of the Lord is what your strength that means your strength is fueled by joy the Bible says in Proverbs 24 10 that if you faint in the day of adversity, eh, in the day of trouble, in the day of test, in the day of difficulty, in the day of pressure, in the day of COVID-19, if we faint, it is a proof and an indication that our strength is small. So if your strength is small, your strength can increase. It can decrease, it can increase. You see that? Your strength is small. So it is small when you faint in the in the day of adversity or battle. Praise God. But if your strength increases in the day of battle, you don't faint. Praise God. What you overcome. So the key now is I need to go for more strength. However, I can find strength in scriptures, I need more strength. Praise God. And one of the very classic source of spiritual strength is joy. Praise God. The joy of the Lord is your strength beloved a certain level of spiritual strength is required to engage in the battles of life we find that from joy a joyful christian is a strong christian we saw in first peter 4 12 that we are to rejoice in as much as you are partakers of christ's suffering we're to rejoice we're to rejoice Let's begin to look at our text and then we'll look at uh, joy at a closer dimension. The NLT, New Living Translation says, Dear brothers and sisters, when, not if, this time bound, when, when troubles of any kind come your way, listen, consider it an opportunity for great joy. You get that? It's what? An opportunity. For what? Great joy. Great joy. Great test. Require great joy. Wow. I'm blessing myself. For you know that when your faith is tested, your endurance has a chance to grow. Underscore the word endurance. That same word endurance is patience. All right? Endure is patience. So let it grow. For when your endurance or your patience is fully developed, you will be perfect and complete, needing nothing. Beloved, patience and endurance does a walk in the life of the saint. It's a walk of maturity. Aha. It's a walk of producing and procuring growth. Aha. You know that there are those plants who have seasons of hibernation where nothing seems to be active, nothing seems to be happening around them as far as, as far as your eyes can see, but they're in a hibernation mode. And that season of their life, of, of, of the plant, it is rejuvenating. It's, it's been revived for greater productivity in the coming season. I would like to believe that perhaps where we are in the globe today is a moment of hibernation or Sabbath that God has allowed us to, 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 to be hedged into Him. Uh, to refresh, to renew, to recalibrate, to revitalize, to be revived, so that in the coming season we can become more fruitful and more more productive, as it were. So likewise, here we see there's a need for patience and endurance through those seasons that not much seems to be happening around. Praise God. Hebrews six twelve says, "Then you will not sorry. Then you will not come sorry. Then you will not become." spiritually dull, this is New Living Translation, NLT, then you will not become spiritually dull and indifferent. Instead, you will follow the example of those who are going to inherit God's promises because of their faith, listen, and endurance. Faith and endurance. Look at King Kijiri, it says, but be not slothful, but followers of them who through faith and Patience. So that word endurance is patience. Inherit the promise. So the two 
ingredient to inherit the promise is faith and patience, or if you like, faith and endurance. You see, oh boy, this, you see, this is, we, we, we read the catalog of Hebrews 11, what we call the Hall of Faith, not Hall of Fame, Hall of Faith, uh, the great patriarchs who walked in faith and were examples to us. So they, they, they obtained a good report by their faith, right? Uh, but you see, uh, they, they, they so obtained the report, not just by faith only, but faith and patience. Oh, oh ba, ba, ba. if you like, faith and endurance. We've emphasized faith, but not quite as much emphasized endurance. The weight in the stay path, the stickability until the manifestation comes. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. As we look at joy, we see joy to be a very, very important key for the season we are in now. Joy becomes for us uh, a sickle for the harvest that I believe the Lord has for us in this season that we are in now. And whether you like it or not, beloved, the enemy is a thief. He comes to steal many things, but one of the things coming to steal is your joy. John 10, 10, the thief does not come, but to steal, to kill, and to destroy. Jesus said, I have come to give you life and life in abundance. So he's a thief, to steal, to kill, and to destroy. And one of the things he wants to steal from believers is their joy. Why? That is the source of their strength. As a matter of fact, I'm beginning to see that with affliction and test and all the things that are negative, uh, uh, his intention is to squeeze out joy from us that we're not able to rejoice and able to turn what was supposed to be adversity into advantage. Wow. So, listen carefully. So, when there is pressure around you, you've got to look inward you, grit your teeth, and say, the way out is never to complain or mother. Murmurers remain, complainers remain, praisers are lifted. So by faith, you rise up within you and begin to rejoice and give him thanks and praise for who he is in your life. Watch the lives of, 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 of believers who are victors and, and kingdom, uh, kingdom giant. One of their secrets is a secret of a joyful lifestyle that established through the years. Just being joyful through seasons, through seasons, especially the difficult seasons, remaining joyful. So the joy of the Lord is your strength. Look at look at look at Sarah. Hebrews 11, 11 says she she judged God faithful in the midst of Isaac not showing forth yet, 25 years waiting. So she judged God faithful, and by judging God faithful, she received strength to conceive and of course strength to deliver Isaac after 25 years of waiting. She judged God faithful. Praise God. Very quickly, why rejoice? Why rejoice? Very quickly, why rejoice? Number one reason why we should rejoice is because it's a commandment the Lord gave us as believers that we're to rejoice. Philippians 4 verse 4. Rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. The New Living Traction says, Always be joyful or always be full of joy in the Lord. I say it again, rejoice. It's a commandment. The Amplified Classic says, Rejoice in the Lord always. Listen, delight. Gladden yourself in Him. Again, I say, Rejoice. Hallelujah. Can somebody shout, I will rejoice. Again, I will rejoice. Once again, I will rejoice. Again, I will rejoice. Once again, I will rejoice. Again, I will rejoice. Praise God. Praise. You know, it's as, you, as you spoke those words, faith began to rise. Strength began to rise. You know, joy began to stay a bubble from within you. I will rejoice. Again, I will rejoice. So, number one reason why we rejoice. Joy, it, rejoicing is a commandment. And there are blessings for obeying any commandment of the law. One of which is to rejoice. Again, I say rejoice. Number two, why do we rejoice? Obviously, rejoicing or joy is a source of spiritual strength. We saw that in Nehemiah 8, 10 moments ago, that the joy of the Lord is your strength and my strength. So the way it works is this. When joy is in place, strength is in place. And when strength is in place, victory is assured. So it's joy, strength, and victory. 
when joy is in place, there's strength to fight. And when there's strength, there's a guarantee of victory. Praise God. So the joy of the Lord is a source of our strength. Number, number three, joy grants us access to the deep treasures of God. Access to depth of the treasures of God. It's oftentimes said that the treasures of God are found in the deep. In the deep, not the surface. Praise God. In the deep. You, go, you dig deep to find oil, to find uh, gold. Treasures are found in the deep. Likewise, the treasures of God are not found by just those who just can, 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 can survey the surface, but those who are willing to go deep. Isaiah 12 verse 3 says, hmm. Therefore, with joy, Thou shalt draw water out of the wells of salvation. Wow. Ooh. Not the well, the wells of salvation. So that well is plural, not singular. That means in that well or in, in, those, in those wells, there are many facets of salvation you can draw from. Healing, transformation, your health, your mouth to this. Name it up. They're all different facets of salvation. But how do we get there? Wells of salvation. We draw from what? Joy. So I put it this way. Your joy is your bucket and your rope. Where would you draw water from the well of salvation? Joy. 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 We come to his presence with a measure of joy. But we find the fullness of joy in his presence. Psalm 1611 says, Thou will show me the path of life. In thy presence is fullness of joy. At thy right hand there are pleasures forevermore. Number four, why rejoice? We rejoice because we are God's children and as such we have an eternal hope of salvation. If you're born again, you're blood washed, you're a child of God, you have a hope beyond your lifetime here. Beyond living 90, 100, 110 years old, there's hope for life beyond now that is, is blissful, is glorious. 1 Peter 1, 7 to 9 says that the trial of your faith being much more precious than of gold that perisheth, though it be tried with fire, might be found unto praise and honor and glory at the appearing of Jesus Christ, whom having not seen, you love in whom though now you see him not yet believe it believe it believe it whoever seen it will believe by faith yet you rejoice with joy unspeakable full of glory joy unspeakable full of glory receiving the end of your faith even the salvation of your souls praise the lord joy unspeakable full of glory so we have a hope that is beyond our times here as believers, as blood washed, blood bought sons and daughters of God. Based on that, we rejoice. Having not seen Him, we believe. Praise God. Why do we rejoice? Joy is a trigger or a catalyst for fruitfulness. It engages fruitfulness, it, it, it activates fruitfulness. Joy, rejoicing. Isaiah 54, 1 to 2. Isaiah 5, 4, 1 to 2. Sing, O barren, thou that didst not bear. Break forth into singing and cry aloud, thou that didst not travel with child. For more are the children of the desolate than the children of the married wife, saith the Lord. Enlarge the place of thy tent and let them stretch forth the curtain of thy habitations. Spare not, lengthen thy cords and strengthen thy stakes. It begins with sing, O barren, thou that didst not bear. Break forth into singing. Cry aloud. So as we break forth into singing, barrenness is cut short and fruitfulness is engaged. So rejoicing and praise and joy activates fruitfulness in our lives. So if there's any area of your life where perhaps you've experienced some measure of barrenness, whatever area, just 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 take a moment and just praise God over that matter. Lift up a praise over that matter and see that thing begin to become fruitful uh, on the account of your blessing God and praising God for it. Number five, I believe it is, or six, I'm not sure now. Joy preserves the blessings of the harvest. It's a preserver of the blessings and the harvest God brings our way. 
Joel 1 verse 12. Joel 1 verse 12. The vine is dried up and the fig tree languisheth. The pomegranate tree and the palm tree also and the apple tree, even all the trees of the field are withered. Guess what? Because joy is withered away from the sons of men. So because joy is withered from the heart of men, likewise, the things around begin to be withered. Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. I, I pray for a reawakening, a revival of joy in the heart of saints across the nations. Wow. Where you have come to that point where you are struggling to be praiseful, to be thankful, to be grateful by the mercy of the Lord at this hour. I, I pray the Lord will stay in your heart again. Uh, a reason and occasion for rejoicing. The Bible says, or the, uh, the song writer says, count your blessings. It will surprise you what the Lord has done. Count it. Name them one by one. It will surprise you pleasantly the many things the Lord has done. But if we don't count them, we don't count them. We may not see how far God has brought us in the track of life. I want you to look in and say, God, you've been good to me. You've been exceptionally good and kind to me. Hallelujah. Number seven, finally. Our rejoicing and our joy brings about a captivity turn around in our lives. Jeremiah 33 verse 11. Jeremiah 33 11. The joy of the Lord is your strength. Hallelujah. The voice of joy and the voice of gladness. So joy has a voice. Huh? The voice of joy and the voice of gladness. The voice of the bridegroom and the voice of the bride. The voice of them shall say, Praise the Lord of hosts. For the Lord is good and his mercy endureth forever. And of them that shall bring the sacrifice of praise. Guess what? Sacrifice of praise into the house of the Lord. Guess what? There's a clincher now. For I will cause to return the captivity of the land as at the first, said the Lord. Captivity returned as at the first. What? At the instance of giving him sacrificial praise or rejoicing. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Beloved, you know, as one who is not born again, you can't really rejoice. You don't have access to joy. You may have access to happiness based on the happenings around you, but ultimately, joy is something that is given to those who know the Lord, who are His children. But the kingdom of God is found on three legs. Righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. Romans 14, 17. The kingdom of God is not meant to drink, but it's in righteousness, peace, and joy in the spirit. <laughs> and the only way we can enjoy these three things, righteousness, peace, and joy, is to be in the spirit, to be born again. Now, wherever you are upon the face of earth, before we pray some, some other prayers, I, I want you to engage where you are. You're saying, uh, man of God, pray with me. I want to secure this matter that pertains to eternal salvation. Perhaps you're even a Christian, you attend church, but you haven't made Jesus truly the Lord of your life. He's your savior, as far as you know, but you, you still want to run your life, rule your life, determine you how you run your life. No, 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 no. He is Lord, he's the governor over your life. This hour, can you buy your heads? Let's pray together. Let's go before the Lord and pray. Pray with me. Pray with me. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, I come to you just as I am. I open the door of my heart as I invite you, Jesus, to be my Lord and my Savior. Forgive me all of my sins. From this day, I decree and declare that Jesus is both my Lord and my Savior. You alone, I will love, I will serve all of my days in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen and amen and amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Uh, wherever you are, if you have any kind of challenge by way of your physicality, your health, your strength, whatever it is, Jesus Christ did three things. He taught the word. He preached the word and he confirmed the word that he taught and preached with miracles and healings and signs and wonders. He's still doing the same in our day, in our age. The word has been taught, the word has been preached. Now, Jesus, the healer, is in the house to heal you of any infirmity, disease, or sickness, whatever it is. Bible declares in Psalm 107 20, he sent his word, his word said, heal them and Deliver them from their afflictions. Wherever you are, lift your hand to your Father. Say, Lord, I'm expecting for your healing touch as I agree with you where you are in the comfort of your home. 
pain in the head, the back, the neck, wherever it is. Just lift your hands and say, Lord, here I am. Here I am. You are my physician. You are my healer. Oh, yes, yes. Father, akunos kete grambo legade. Zuso ke puke si ke tre palata si kata. Let your word run swiftly across the nations, oh God. Expunging disease and infirmity from bodies, from minds and psyches. E kabatu kasaka germs, virus, bacteria be cast from the root in the name of the Lord of God. Let your health and your strength be released now from the crown of your head to the tip of your toes. Right now, in the name of the Lord, Lord will give you praise. Now begin to move your hands, your legs, wherever it was that was pain and difficulty and thank the Lord. Say, Lord, I thank you. You are my healer. I give you praise. I give you praise. I give you praise. I give you praise. Woo! I give you praise. Lord, I thank you. I receive it now. I give you praise. I give you praise. Keep on those katanga. I give you praise in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. I'm aware, as you are aware, but we are living in very challenging times, especially economically. I want us to trust the Lord, that He's the God who is able to bring water from the rock. He's the God who is still able to rain down manna if need be. He's a God who is very caring, very loving concerning his children. David shared a testament that once I was old, now once I was young, now I'm old. I've never seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed beg bread. God watches over his own children. Hallelujah. If an earthly father knows how to give you bread, uh, not, not stone, how to give you fish, not serpent, how much more your heavenly father. I want us to trust the Lord for those who have one need or the other between a rock and a hard place for the divine intervention of God. But I also want to trust God with you that God will give you ideas, concepts, of the number of witty events, you know what to do at this season to profit well with all ideas. One idea will rock and rule your world. Get, now lift your hand, let's pray together. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, we thank you that you declare you open your hands and you satisfy the desire of every living flesh. Father, I pray that you, by your mercy, by your grace, that you intervene and intercept in the welfare and the well-being of your people across the nation now. By your mercy, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Lord, let ideas rest upon our minds that in this time we know exactly what to do. Common ideas at our sleeping moment, at our waking moment, ideas to know exactly what to do. Thank you for it. We give you praise and we'll have cause to testify of this in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Finally, I want us to trust the Lord for a baptism of the spirit of joy, the garment of praise. Is that all right? Father, thank you. Lord, we ask that you clothe us again with the garment of praise. Let every spirit of heaviness looming and hovering over the people across the nations, let it be lifted and be broken in Jesus' name. Thank you for the garment of praise. We lift our voice and thank him. Can you thank him? Bless him. Bless him. Hallelujah. Give him praise. Give him praise. Glory and honor belongs to him. Thank you and thank you and thank you and thank you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We're giving thanks. Now, if you pray that prayer of salvation, uh, please endeavor to connect with us. Numbers will be on the screen. Uh, we have counselors, pastors, leaders who are on site on those lines to pray with you and to further strengthen your resolve to serve the Lord and to love the Lord. For those who join us uh, uh, sometime after the offering we received, uh, it's an opportunity for you to serve the Lord with your, with your offerings and your give, givings. And uh, we are in a season where uh, naturally we want to hold back from the Lord. But remember, to be able to give God joy and praise uh, in the moment of difficulty takes faith. Likewise, it takes faith to cast your seed in the time of famine. Isaac, Genesis 26, 26 12 says, he sowed in the time of famine, time of apparent difficulty and lack. He reaped a multiple fold. I want to challenge you, give to the Lord. When it's too small in your hands, put it in the hand of the Lord and it will multiply to the overflow to meet your need more than you can ever imagine. Hallelujah. Uh, on the screen there uh, are ways you can serve the Lord with your seeds and your givings. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Let's thank the Lord for the next 30 seconds and bless Him for the outpouring of grace. Decree and declare what the Lord has done in your life is permanent. Yes, yes. This garment of joy that has come upon you. No more heaviness. No more bondage. No more weight. I am free. This week is a blessed week. The lines falls upon you in Pleasant places. You hear goodies from far and from near. We're breaking forth, we're breaking up. We're busting forth into new realms, new realms and dimensions. 
Lord, we thank you. We give you the praise. We give you the glory. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, amen and amen. You have just experienced the preaching and teaching ministry of Goodheart Obi Ekweme, lead pastor of Revival House of Glory International Church, Rajik, and the apostolic leader of the Horn of Revival Ministry, HORM, a global outreach ministry mandated to carry the torch of revival across cities and nations. If you would like to ask a question, share your prayer request or testimony, or get more messages or books from Goodheart, please call or text 0805-223-4444 or email info at rogic.org. Also, download the Horn of Revival Ministry app on Google Play or Apple Store to connect with a variety of free quality resources including Rogic Radio and our refreshing daily devotions to take you higher in life. Keep hearing the Word of God It will produce intimacy with His Spirit for uncommon encounters on the earth.